Hi everyone and welcome to the Peninsula VFL update. I'm Mick O'Neill and joined here by John T. Ralph Smith as always. John yeah, T. really looking forward to this show, Mick. So for the first uh, seven or eight episodes we've had of the VFL update, obviously we've had a pretty close focus on the Franks and Dolphins and great to see them going well at five wins and four losses. But what we wanted to do with this show was to take a broader look at the VFL and particularly players from MPNFL clubs who are plying their trade at VFL clubs across the competition. And we'll also look at those players who are listed at MPNFL clubs and at NAB League clubs, particularly the Dandenong Stingrays, who are doing some special things. So I'm looking forward to this. We do preface this by saying we've done our research based on the final list that was submitted for both sides uh, for both competitions back in about March this year. So um, if we miss anyone, please let us know in the comments uh, and there are some players from MPNFL clubs plying their trade on supplementary lists. Um, we'll try and cover them in a future episode. But hopefully this goes well. Jonty, we're going to kick kick this off and move our way through the MPNFL clubs and start off with the Bond Beach Football Club. Probably before we do kick off, probably just worth mentioning that for the course of the show, you'll focus on the MPNFL clubs who are at VFL, or the MPNFL players who are at VFL clubs, and I'll focus on the ones that are at NAB League clubs. That's a great point, Jonty. Um, so if you want to start with Bond Beach, they've got Bo Bailey and Tyson Milne from a VFL perspective. Yeah, both plying their trade at Sandringham. Bo Bailey, a former uh, Frankston VFL player, Bo's played the first couple of games this year, averaging 11.5 possessions a game. Tyson Milne, always one uh, that St Kilda supporters take an interest in as being the son of famous small forward Stevie. He's had the five games, averaging 14 touches and looking pretty good at the level, I have to say, Jonty. Yeah, well, Tyson Milne, he was one that the last couple of years has been a lot of press around him, so good to see him going really well at Bomb Beach. And then that's the two players from Bomb Beach on VFL list. Yeah, Joel Day's the only other one who's uh, listed at Sandringham. He hasn't uh, been able to break through for a game. They've obviously got a really strong squad down there. And there has been opportunities for young players to break in, but he hasn't been able to, any, unfortunately. So if we move on to Dramana, from a NAB League perspective, the big name there is Jake Saligo. He's touted to go potentially as a first-round pick. He's gone really well this year in the Eastern Devils midfield, in the Eastern Rangers midfield, rather. Um, just a really in and under on baller, applies the pressure and he gets a lot of the ball. He's had a really good season. Tyler Sonzi is the other one, probably in the Eastern Rangers midfield, who's touted and probably overshadows him at times, but he's been really good. And people who watched him on Saturday uh, against the Dandenong Stingrays, that was a really good match at Skybus Stadium. He got 28 touches and showed why he's so good. Also in the Vic Country trial match, Jake Saligo was probably best on ground in that first match, particularly early, kicking a couple of goals. So he's one to look out for in AFL lists on future years. He's previously been listed at Montrose, and his brother Nathan also listed at Dramana. From so a can I ask from a, a non-educated point, Jody, they, yeah. they play for Dramana but represent the Eastern Rangers, is that right? Yeah, so local club is Dramana. Obviously, Jake hasn't played for Dramana because he's been playing with the Eastern Rangers and Vic, um, Vic Metro as well during the during the championships. Okay. From a VFL perspective, Dramana have uh, three VFL-listed players. Sam Fletcher has been plying his trade at Frankston this year after coming off the AFL list at Gold Coast Suns. Yep. He's, as we both know, we've been really impressed with him uh, in the first six games, six or seven games of the year, unfortunately, now with the season-ending knee injury, I think it is, John T. I think it's an ankle injury. Ankle injury. Yeah, just on the first couple of training sessions back from lockdown after doing all the work during lockdown unfortunately I think he injured himself which is unfortunate for him but it's good to see him down at the Franks and Dolphins and like you say listed locally with Germana. Yeah he, he was making nice progress so um, we look forward to seeing him getting back on the park next year. Sam Fowler or the Rat Fowler as people would know him in MPNFL circles uh, he's been such a he's such a good performer in MPNFL level but he's highly entertaining uh, always uh, putting on a show up forward. Uh, he's played every game this year at uh, Collingwood, Sam. Uh, seven games, averaging the 13 disposals under his former Stingrays coach, Craig Black. They're at five and two and going along nicely. And I have to say, Sammy's playing his best footy at VFL level. He's going really nicely. 
and a little bit of a mix between forward and midfield time at the moment. Sam appears to have got himself really fit and showing that he's uh, got the qualities to play at and even times above the level. So he's going very, very nicely. And we got the privilege of watching him play against Frankston a couple of weeks ago and he looked quite good. He did. Uh, Willie, Willie, uh, Billy Gertz or William Gertz is another yep. guy who played. I think he played a couple of games early for Collingwood this year. I've uh, got a feeling he might be back as a permanent uh, player at Germana, but he's still a... Uh, very promising uh, tall or, or Ruckman uh, and Dramana are reaping the benefits of him playing down there. Probably worth mentioning as well that Ricky Johnson, who's a Dramana stalwart over the years, coaching def- the defensive group at Frankston as well and he's really, he's loved around the place his communication, his professionalism is the sort of things that people say he's brought to the club. Yeah, he's he's flying uh, Ricky Johnson and look out for some media in the future from him. Yeah. Jonty, an esteemed journalist, has written an article on him uh, so keep keep an eye out for that. But he's showing promise as a future um, VFL coach or, or, or perhaps beyond and, and well-loved across the peninsula. Yeah, very good at building relationships with everyone. If we move on to EDS, Brett O'Hanlon's played a few games for Frankston and brought lots of composure down back and just that seasoned experience and a good ball user. Yeah, I think he played the eight games at Richmond. Yeah, 2013-14 um, yeah. time frame. Yeah, and, and a more mature player. He, he's, um, he's just rock solid at VFL level. Uh, I think he's missed uh, the last two or three games, John D. But I know Frankston are a better side when when he's uh, he's in their lineup. Yeah, I think the most recent game he played was against Essendon. We haven't seen him since. Yeah, and he had a nice little stint up forward that day. But uh, you're likely to see him holding down a key post uh, key post at Frankston. Uh, from a Frankston Bombers perspective, if we move on, Josiah Kyle is probably the name that jumps off the page there. He's played every game for Dandenong Stingray so far this season. Doesn't get a lot of the ball, but when he does get it, you notice he's got a good leap on him. He's got a good ability to find the goals, and he's got raw pace and, and a lot of talent. Um, really dangerous in the forward line is Josiah Kyle, and he's tied to St Kilda's Next Generation Academy. Okay. So he's one to certainly keep an eye on. Yeah, his number's probably averaging eight or nine touches a game, but he always gets opportunities, and he's very good at converting those opportunities. Uh, From a VFL perspective, I was going to say, yep. Franks and Bombers don't have any currently listed VFL players, but I did get down to watch the game, their great victory over Franks and YCW uh, last weekend, and they have an array of VFL and AF, ex-AFL talent running around for Franks and Bombers. Sam Fox is probably the one that uh, jumps to mind immediately. He was a runner-up in Sandy's Best and Fairest in 2019. Uh, they also have uh, Khan Haratuku. Yep. Uh, who's he's had Port a Melbourne listed. Port Melbourne, Frankston, and St Kilda listed. Uh, I think uh, Corey Buchan yep. uh, now plying his trade uh, up forward. Uh, he, he's going nicely. He played 94 games at Frankston. I saw a uh, bearded Jake Batchelor. Um, we know that we know from previous episodes of the Peninsula VFL update that you do have a soft spot for Jake Batchelor as a coach of Sandy. Well, I did I did see him playing uh, for Bombers on the weekend uh, and going nicely as always. Maybe his fitness has, has dropped <laughs> off just a one or two percent, but that's what comes from being the Sandy Ham senior coach. And then you got players like Bo Muston, but no active VFL players. Um, for Franks and Bombers, but an active VFL coach. Uh, I said that Josiah Cole played all the games. I think he's missed one. But the another player who has captained the Dan- the Dandenong Stingrays actually a couple of weeks back when they played the Tassie Devils and had a lot of players out on Vic Country duties is Daniel Didamenecantonio. We hope we're pronouncing his name right. Can you say that one more time? Didamenecantonio. Okay. So it's, a, it's a tongue twister, but he he's um, named in the leadership group at the start of the year and he's he's been really good for them reliable averages that sort of high teens to low 20s disposal range off sort of half back and into the midfield nice nice mix down there at franks and bombers if we move on to franks to ycw john t who have traditionally had a lot of vfl players on their list but this year i have them with with the two players locky street uh applying his craft is with the richmond vfl side captain of richmond is uh, that right i'm i'm not sure if he's captain of richmond but he's one of their first picked every week he's played the nine games so far this year, averaging 14 disposals a game. Actually playing as their ruckman the last couple of weeks, which is probably uh, a little bit uh, unnatural for Lockie, but he's doing doing a, a really, really good job. And, and he's just a, uh, a play-every-week class VFL player at, at the moment, Lockie Street. And people had probably the joy of watching him at Franks in YCW for a strong 18 months, two years as well. Josh Pickus, another one who plays for Williamstown. Has he come out of the side? 
the last he has he's played the last so. last two games at Frankston YCW, but um, Josh Pickus has probably played every game uh, at Williamstown for the last three or four years. He, he's he was actually best player against Frankston earlier this year in in the VFL, but uh, Josh has spent a couple of uh, weeks back at Frankston YCW. I know his ex housemate Josh Newman was down watching him against the Bombers and. Josh did. Josh Pickus went for a run in front of the commentary box. The ball bounced back over his head, and Josh Newman wasn't that sympathetic to him. But uh, Franks and YCW, if they keep getting Josh Pickus available, that's a, that's a luxury for them. Yeah, if we just go through Franks and YCW's NAB League listed players, they have got a few of them. Probably led by Henry Berenger, who's played the five games for them. It's a he, famous name at Franks and YCW. It is a famous name. Do you want to tell us why? Um, it'd be his father, Mark Berenger, I'm assuming, who. As Peter Sutovich gives us some advice from behind the camera. Past uh, leaving a game player in yes. the NFL. Mark Berenger once took a saving mark uh, in the finals for Frank Samoyde at ICW in the seniors. I think he was only 15 or 16 at the time and gets down to all the past players' games. Certainly from Henry Berenger's perspective, he's a key defender at the NAB League level. Like I say, he's played five games and he's a 19-year-old. He was very consistent in his underage year and there were high hopes of what he could have done last year in 2020. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to showcase that. But putting on a bit of size is always good for a key defender. So nice. now, um, you know, putting some good performances together, he also trained at the Frankston Dolphins in pre-season. Nice. Which would only have been beneficial for him. Hudson Hill, another young key position player, uh, out of YCW, he played the one game against Tassie when the Dandy Nong Stingrays were a little bit weakened by those players that went out. So good. It's a bit of a him. rock star name, that Hudson Hill. I like it. Yeah, the alliteration of it's very nice. Um, and is that does that cover us for Neb League for Franks and YCW? A uh, couple of other players. Zeb Quick's played three games. Um, he's an eighteen-year-old, and he's you know sort of coming out of defence. Um, when he's played and he's gone all right. And Zach Tobin played in the Vic Country Trial match, so that speaks to how highly they rate him down at. Down at the Dandy Nong Sting race is another key position player at 195 centimetres to keep your to keep your eyes on. That's nice. If we move on to Hastings, there's no current Hastings player playing in the VFL. From a NAB League perspective, Clayton Gay is listed at Hastings, and he was one last year that uh, probably along with Will Bravo, who we'll talk, talk about later, who was touted as a potential late or rookie yeah, pick for was, the Dandenong yeah. yeah. Stingrays. Unfortunately, wasn't picked up, and no one from the Dandenong Stingrays was picked up, but I know they promoted him quite heavily. He had a lot of raw talent as a kid. I think he won seven best and fairest for Balnearing Junior Footy Club. Mm-hmm. And so lots of talent, lots of pace, able to kick a goal. Um, really like, oozes talent when you watch him, but he's combined that with hard work in the last few years. I had a reasonable 2019 season. Yeah. Um, which is probably why he was uh, someone who was exciting to watch going into 2020. This season he's played three games before getting injured, unfortunately. But he's certainly one of their better players down there when he's available, Clayton Gay. And at the 19-year-old getting getting that opportunity with, with the wiping out of the 2020 season through COVID. So is he still one to... Is he an outside chance still, John T? Draft-wise? Uh, I would hope so. I would hope so. Hopefully he gets back and puts some consistent footy on the park either as that sort of small sort of board or even moving up to the ground if he can develop his tank enough. That's nice. If we move on to the Lang Warren Footy Club, who have been going uh, just nicely in the uh, MPNFL this year, uh, undefeated until being knocked off by Somerville a couple of weeks ago. At VFL level, they have the former Sydney Swan AFL player, Zach Foot playing for Casey Demons. Yep. Uh, Zach has played six games, averaging 16 plus disposals for Casey, uh, showcasing all the talent that everyone saw at Lang Warren and the Dandenong Stingrays prior to him being drafted. He played, two, I think it was two AFL games for Sydney last year. I thought he was unlucky to get delisted, but he's showing those same traits for Casey this year. Um, at, I think he's played two games back at Lang Warren this year yep. because Casey have had so many AFL players available and was it eighteen on the weekend or something like that for Casey? Yeah, just just a phenomenal run with injury that the Melbourne Footy Club's having and, and you hear the feedback about how, how well he fits back into the side when he comes in. He, he he must be some chance of um, getting another opportunity at AFL level and he's he's going nicely. Someone from a NAB League perspective is Jai Cully. He's played all seven games for the Dandenong Stingrays, and those of you who watched on the weekend the game against Eastern Rangers, which I brought up before, he kicked two goals and almost was able to turn the momentum and get the Dandenong Stingrays back in it. Unfortunately, they went down by two points, but he's really dangerous inside 50, Jai Cully, and has shown he can match it at that sort of elite level. And that's the, that's the completion right. of the NAB League for 
Langwarren. For if you move on to the Mornington Footy Club, who are also going nicely this year in uh, the MPNFL. Josh Newman from Frankston. The Frankston captain is is tied to Mornington, but uh, it's unlikely that Mornington will ever see him pull on the colours while he's still playing VFL football. Uh, he is just a rock solid star of the VFL. Uh, his captaincy at Frankston's phenomenal. Uh, and his season would probably see him in the top three or four in Frankston's best and fairest yet again. Jonty, you've had the chance to watch him a few times this year. Yeah, I think so. He's really reliable on the ball. He's very efficient, and the leadership he brings to that group is is phenomenal uh, on and off the field. And if anyone gets a chance to watch him, his um, his attack on the footy is yeah, he's tenacious. I know that's something you always love to highlight. I th- and I actually think he deserves an opportunity at AFL level. So if there's any recruiters out there who value my opinion, of which I know there aren't many, um, but have a look at Josh Newman. He, he could fill a list on six or a spot on six or seven AFL lists, I think. He's closing in on 100 VFL games, I think. So that's sort of how experienced he is. And you do see it when he plays every week and, you know, he's ultra consistent. And he's yeah. played all his matches at Frankston Bar one year at Willie in 2017 when Frankston went into recession. Perry Lewis-Smith, another one at Mornington. Yes. Uh, currently at uh, the Port Melbourne Football Club. Perry's had a couple of VFL clubs over the journey. He started the season at Aspley Footy Club up in Queensland. Uh, but I did see recently, it's only three or four weeks back, Simon Goosey with the recruiting coup got him back to Mornington. Uh, got him for the one game and he was straight into the uh, Port Melbourne senior side. He's played the two games uh, and already I think he's averaging 18 possessions in those two games. So he's slotted in... Uh, just seamlessly back into the Port Melbourne team. <laughs> Sorry, your computer showing something funny. That's all right. Keep carrying on. Oh, I don't know what it was showing, but I don't do know. I got a phone call just <laughs> then. So, uh, yeah, so 18 and a half disposals. He'll play for um, Port Melbourne probably every week. Jaunty, it must be funny. <laughs> We're not going to a break, so we can no, cut this, right. Jaunty. We're continuing on. Um, so, Perry Lewis Smith will be, uh, yeah. you'll see him at Skybus Stadium this Friday night against Frankston. Mount Eliza, another side who probably a footy factory on the Mornington Peninsula. They've got probably 10 to 15 players. Almost need their own segment, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. 10 to 15 players, either VFL listed or NAB League listed um, at the level at or playing for Mount Eliza. They see some of them every week, some of them they don't see much of. Do you want to maybe start with Mason DeWitt, someone they don't see much of? Yes, Mason uh, flying at, at Box Hill these days. I think he's, it might be his third season he's had at Box Hill. He plays every week, Mason uh those on the peninsula would be fairly mm. familiar with his flowing blonde locks and his yes. left foot coming out of defence. Yep. Uh, he's averaging 19 to 20 possessions a week at, at Box Hill. Um, has just built himself a really nice career there under the coaching of Sam Mitchell this year. And he'll continue to, um, unless Hawthorne have no injuries, Mason will play most weeks uh, at Box Hill and continue on down that path. Um, at, there's a number of uh, players from Man Eliza who are listed with Frankston. Mm. So uh, Jeremy Goddard, uh, the Beanpole Ruckman, he's played probably 50-50 between the two teams this year. But he's comes probably going to have to start stepping up with the retirement of Lewis Pierce from, German, uh, from Man Eliza, unfortunately with concussion. But they sort of formed a formidable sort of ruck duo. Yeah, they did. And he'll be obviously coming across from Western Australia, yeah. played for Claremont in the Waffle. He'll be looking to play more footy at Frankston, 202 centimetres, 105 kilos. Uh, hard, hard to miss him out on the field. Uh, Tom Small's got a lot of love from the Mornington Peninsula and he's played some games at Frankston. Yeah, he, he, and, and a, he's a favourite of many people at Man Eliza. I like the way he goes about his footy, uh, Tom Small. Unfortunately, I omitted last week from the uh, Frankston side. Every time he goes back to Man Eliza, he performs well. Frankston have shaped him into a bit of a, a small defender trying to take on some of the lively forwards. across. He's done well, actually, in his... Um, VFL performances this year, but it's a tough it's a tough gig at VFL level. You think of a, of a game he played when he was playing on Billy Murphy, who's a dangerous blonde forward from the Northern Bullants, and he was able to shut him down reasonably well. He didn't have much impact on the game. Uh, Billy Murphy, Lockie Williams, another one who's sublisted at Frankston. Uh, unfortunately, he hasn't been able to play at either level this year because of injury. Just when his injury was sort of improving, uh, suffered another setback. Uh, but his supplementary listed at Frankston. He's obviously come through the Dandenong Stingray system. Uh, and we'll hear from him now. And you touch on the fact that you've been injured, uh, but obviously you played a pracky game for Frankston, and obviously you've also been around the program with the off-field side of things as well. What sort of stuff yep. are you learning at Frankston that you're able to take back to the Red Lakes? Um, oh, it's just oh, particularly off field my leadership, especially at Mount Eliza, because we've got a real young core group of players 
coming through as well and just having that experience at a higher level, um, I'm able to translate that back to all the other boys back at Mount Eliza and they're um, more than willing to listen and learn to go from there and obviously I'm still learning from the older boys like Josh Newman and Fraser as well and all those guys. So, um, yeah, that's kind of really what I'm enjoying most about Franks just being able to learn on the go whilst I'm there and then also be able to transition it and showcase it to all the other boys back at Mount Eliza. And you talk about the Josh Newmans and the Nathan Freemans. You've talked about Bailey Lambert in the past as well as being sort of an enthusiastic ball of energy, I suppose. Is there anyone you yep. sort of lean on, any of those guys in particular? There's obviously a few guys like Tommy Small that are at Mount Eliza as well that are listed with Frankston. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, all those um, names like Josh Newman, obviously, he, Skipper, running around just teaching everyone really from the get-go. Freeze has been really um, been unreal as well, even our uh, uh, Coxie as well. He's um, been consistently playing games, really good games and all that. So it's always good to um, see what his input is to the team and obviously what he thinks about certain aspects of the game as well. And yeah, uh, Lambo is just, um, he's obviously a ball of energy. So it's really easy just to ricochet off him and kind of get the gist of how the VFL runs. And as long as we're enjoying it, um, we're playing our best footy. And just a word on the Red Leg season so far, like you say, you're going along pretty nicely. Yeah, we are, definitely. Um, it's uh, it's a big learning curve for us this year, I feel, personally, because um, we've got such raw young talent. It's just stringing together consistent games and playing some good footy consistently, especially now it's getting towards um, crunch time with the finals and all that, and obviously those more experienced um, bodies like at YC and Fraction Bombers and all that, they'll start to come out so um yeah we just got to take what we can and learn and just gel together as one big group and we'll go very far yeah good to hear from Lockie there John T uh we will run through the other Mount Eliza football club players who are playing at VFL level this year Daniel Caulfield's listed with Sandringham he's played the seven games 14 disposals played in the premiership at Richmond he was uh, he signed with Mount Eliza as his local club this year. I'm not sure they're really going to see him during the year. He's a first choice uh, player for Sandringham. Finn Bain, or Finlay Bain, as he's listed as, he's he's really stepped up his game this year. Played the six games for Sandringham, averaging just a tick under 16 possessions. Mm. He's getting nice midfield time at Sandringham. They're actually showing a bit of faith in him. So he's really, really progressed this year after two years on Richmond's list. And it's good to see when players are able to play their preferred position at VFL level. It's not always the... it's not always the case, particularly yeah. when you're in an aligned AFL club. Most of the midfield time goes to AFL clubs. But Finn Bain, like we mentioned with Tyson Milne, uh, earlier, Sandringham is showing some faith in, faith in their VFL-listed players and he's getting uh, nice game time. Some other players who Mount Eliza won't be seeing a lot of are the NAB League players out of the Dandenong Stingrays. Will Bravo, probably the main one there, but they've also got Jimmy Cowell. If we start with Will Bravo, he's, like we mentioned before, he's another one who probably had some draft interest Last year was one that Dandenong were promoting as a potential probably fourth round pick. Unfortunately, he wasn't picked up. There was also some talk Melbourne were going to take him in the mid-season draft and he wasn't picked up there. But the sort of player he is, is just he's another one of those sort of hard-on ballers. He does all the defensive stuff well. He's got a big tank and he, he showed a little bit of that in 2019. Unfortunately, his 2020 was wiped out. If he played 2020 like so many others, was probably one who could have pushed himself up the yeah. ranks a little bit more. Um, played for Essendon recently. Play, 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 made his debut for Richmond oh, against Richmond, sorry, the yeah. Northern Bullants on the weekend. Uh, so good to see him playing senior footy. He also got to train at Box Hill, or yeah, train on it at Hawthorne in pre-season to try to win a supplementary selection there, but wasn't able to do so. But got the tutelage of Sam Mitchell and Alistair Clarkson, which is only going to be beneficial for him going forward. And also trained at Casey in pre-season, so he's one to watch for the future. If not at MPNFL and VFL level, then at higher levels. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Carl, another one. He's the brother of Essendon's Ned Carl. Do you want to quickly give us a rundown of, on how Ned Carl's going? Yeah, I think he's not, uh, going nicely. Uh, I think he played VFL on the weekend, AFL the previous week. We watched him out at Windy Hill closely the day yeah. they took on Frankston, and he was a class above with his ball use through the midfield. So he's probably a player that would wish he was playing more at AFL level, yeah. but I think he's 
Uh, I think he's progressive, n- progressing nicely, Ned Cale, and, and should carve out a nice career at the Bombers. Jimmy Carr's another one who makes good decisions with ball in hand, probably really good at delivering inside 50, playing that wing sort of half-forward role at the Sandy Dragons and very clean. Yeah, that's good. Uh, from other players, from a NAB League perspective, Bailey Welsh, he's the captain of the Dandenong Stingrays this year. He's played three games, was unavailable for selection earlier in the season. He had a solid 2019. His first match back, I think, was against the Gold Coast Academy, and he showed what all the hype about him was about. Okay. Uh, 33 possessions he picked up. That's a, that's a handy haul in any game, John. Uh, and he brings burst to that midfield group as well, can also play off halfback. Lockie Hodder, another one. Uh, he's played the three games, the Devils game. Like like so many of the players from the Dandenong Stingrays, able to step up and fill a role when players were missing. Lockie Robinson, another one. He's played five games. And Declan Cole, he's a 19-year-old. He's an interesting story, Declan Cole. His first year of uh, at the level this year, and he accumulates the ball really well. So be able to go up to the level and still accumulate the ball, get yourself in good positions and have that confidence to back yourself. Good to see him going well, playing every game so far for the Dandenong Stingrays. Some ex Mount Eliza boys I know you want to touch on, Mick. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple um, that we we haven't touched on. Matt McGannon's listed at Port Melbourne uh, out of Mount Eliza. Uh, and th- their former players now, Mitch McCarthy, who was a Mount Eliza boy, uh, he's at uh, Port Melbourne this year. He's having all sorts of troubles with injury and with his knees. I feel like they've found the problem now. I think it was nerve-related and he's a chance to get back on the park in the back end of the season but he's changed his local club to Deer Park this year but uh, always going to be linked to um, Mount Eliza. Tom Freeman's also a former uh, red leg who plies his trade at uh, the Casey Demons yeah. and, and goes very well. They're a bit of a footy yeah. factory down at Mount Eliza at the moment. I think they have um, more junior clubs than there are streets in Frankston I think so uh, they're always going to be producing uh, quality out of Mount Eliza. Who are we going to move on to next, Mick? We're going to move on to the Pines Football Club, coached by everyone's favourite, uh, Paddy Swain. Um, from a Frankston perspective, we have to give Kyle Jacobson a, sh- a shout-out. He's on the supplementary list at Frankston. Yep. Uh, a much-loved player down at the Dolphins, and he's been uh, whacking away at Pines. Could fill a role of small forward, is that right? Yeah, there's a plethora of small very, forwards. Very, very small forward. At, at um, Frankston at the moment. They're playing four of them in the mm. senior side, so it makes it... Uh, really difficult for Kyle to break in, but 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 I'd hope he'd get a chance before the end of the year. Luke Delmau, uh has played the three games for Sandringham this year, uh, averaging the nine touches a game. Uh, I watched him play round one against Richmond. I know Paddy Swain was in the crowd watching Luke that day, and uh, he, he's a solid player at VFL level, and um, welcome back to Pines every time he's not selected at, uh, at Sandringham. No one from a NAB League perspective. Uh, Red Hill, we'll move on to next. I know Harry Sullivan plays at the NAB League level. He's played six or seven games for Dandy Nong, and he just brings elite, run, elite running every week. Just the one? Just the one. Just the yep. one NAB Leaguer. I've got three uh, VFL-listed players from Red Hill. Nathan Scagliarini as a favourite of both of ours. Yep. Um, Skaggs had a, a massive pre-season, did some work up in Darwin, for the uh, Tiwi Bombers. In... I was trying to get him before. I think he went up with Mason DeWitt, who we touched oh, on I did, before. yes, yeah. Um, they... Who also played some footy up there. Yep. Uh, so Nathan, uh, coming off a shoulder injury from 2019, mm. where he only played the one game, uh, played, I think, three games early in the season uh, for Frankston. He's gone back to Round Red two, Hill. Three for... and four, I reckon he played, yeah. yeah he's had, had a couple of games uh, back at Red Hill. Uh, I think he's still a future VFL star, Nathan Scagliarini, so... Uh, he'll be looking to push his way back in at some stage, uh, the Frankston lineup. But but I think he'll have a long career still at Frankston. Yeah, he's had he was at Frankston in twenty eighteen and Sandy in twenty seventeen as well. So he's been around a while, but he's still only twenty two or twenty three. Yeah, and he's built his body up to to be VFL ready. So I still, I still think he can go on to be a star at VFL, if not beyond. Steve Morris from Red Hill is still listed. Uh, at Richmond, I think he's the captain yeah. or co-captain. Possibly, yeah. Uh, at Richmond and. And when either Richmond have too many AFL players available or there's a buyer who generally bobs up at Red Hill, that's a massive signing for, for Red Hill this year as well. Uh, and Daniel Frampton, who's on um, Sandringham's list from Red Hill, he's played the two games and uh, averaging the 12.5 touches for those games. 
that's all from a NAB League and VFL perspective. We'll move on to Rosebud next, and I know you're going to want to touch on Campbell Hustleweight, but his younger brother, Henry, is listed with the Dandenong Stingrays as a 17-year-old 17, 17 playing yeah. in the under-17 champs at the moment. So he's one to watch out for in the future. Campbell Hustleweight, obviously, at Collingwood under Craig Black. Yeah, and such a well-known name on the peninsula. Father Mark was a star at multiple clubs as a player and coach. Uh, Campbell, I think, and the family are Collingwood supporters. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Campbell's fi- finding himself playing for his uh, boyhood team, named co-captain of the VFL team this year. He's a he's a pro's pro, Campbell. He, he just gets the job done. Played the six games, uh, averaging 17 and a half uh, disposals a game and does a whole lot of uh, grunt work uh, outside of the, uh, finding the footy. He's, he's just a rock star, Campbell, I think, at VFL level. And... Uh, at some stage, he could even poke up on a rookie list at some point and get a job done. Yeah, absolutely. It's probably one that was unlucky in his draft year not to get a look in, but obviously getting named co-captain of Collingwood's VFL side speaks to his professionalism, so I'm sure he's doing everything he can to try to get that knock up at a higher level as he touched on. Dale Marshall, another one at Rosebud, listed on a yeah, VFL. Yeah, so he's at Carlton, played the two games, uh, averaging 12, 12 touches, so when he when he gets the opportunity, he's not uh, he's finding himself uh, okay at the level, so that's, that's a positive one. Uh, for Rosebud to see those two boys running around at BFL level. And we're moving on to Sorrento and your favourite dangerous Danny Hughes as you anointed well, him. Well, just before we do that, we'll touch on the Seaford Footy okay. club, club and they have Mitch White from the Casey Demons uh, listed with them. He did play for Seaford a couple of weeks ago, I think it was. He, he's just a bona fide um, yep. player at VFL level. Obviously was on Melbourne's list for quite some time and played senior footy. Uh, it's a bonus for Seaford if he comes back and plays games for them, but um, given a reasonable um, opportunity, he'll play every game at, at the KC Demons. To move on to the yeah, dangerous Danny Hughes. As you anointed him, what was it, the uh, Northern Bull Ants against the Frankston game? Well, I've anointed him, but I don't know if it's caught on with anyone. <laughs> so, um, But i uh, got a lot of respect for, for um, Daniel Hughes. Uh, in the MPNFL ranks, he's been a Frankston YCW player. Uh, probably for the last three or four seasons. Mm. Uh, he spent a year at the Sandringham Zebras in the VFL, uh, changed local clubs to Sorrento. He's played every game for the Northern Bull Ants this year, who are shaping up as the, the story of the VFL season, coming back from the dead when Carlton uh, cancelled their alignment. They've now won two consecutive games. The first of those, uh, dangerous Danny Hughes, was named best player by Josh Fraser. He's plying his trade as a very much undersized Ruckman, uh, but as anyone who's watched him play knows that he has an earnest attack on the footy in the man. And so he's played the eight games, averaging 11 11 touches and 14 hit outs a game. So so credit to uh, Danny for the work he's done at at Northern Bull Ants this year. That probably just about wraps us up. It does. I hope it's been of some value for people out there, the supporters of the MPNFL. We'll try and uh, touch base uh, semi-regularly uh, with this sort of program. Maybe we'll do another one towards the end of the year, Jonty. Yep. Uh, but it, it's actually been quite an enjoyable exercise tracking all those players and, and seeing how they're going and, and all things going well. They'll continue to push their name up at VFL level and I'm sure we'll see a number of those players also qualifying for MPNFL finals and applying their trade in September with their local clubs. And certainly from a NAB League perspective, I'm sure there's some who will be pushing for higher honours. We talk about, we've talked about Will Bravo and Clayton Gay last year, someone like a Bailey Welsh this year and, and potentially Jimmy Carl. We know how loved he is, if not at AFL level, then certainly at VFL level in the future. Like you touched on at the top of the show, if we have missed anyone who's supplementary listed or has come onto a list late or anything like that, then certainly let us know in the comments and we'll make sure that we do touch on them in the show later in the year. Yeah, it's always a pleasure uh, to be involved in Mornington Peninsula football. It's produced so many AFL and VFL players over the journey. Maybe we'll touch on uh, the uh, AFL listed players in the end of season show as well, Jonty, but uh, at, at this point, uh, I think we've covered all the players that we've researched. We want to thank everyone for taking the time to watch the show. Uh, and thank you for joining us for the Peninsula VFL update.